During last night's Backyard Tech Channel Weekend Livestream Conversations Saturday edition, a viewer of the Backyard Tech Channel, long-time subscriber, Tenex Optics, posed a question to me that took us a bit of time to try and figure out what he was asking. Simply, how do you stop someone trying to attack your systems? Many, many times here at the Backyard Tech Channel, I've done videos about it. Only this time, I'm going to keep this one blunt, brutal, to the point. It's Q&A and advice time, plus viewer video request time, plus KISS tutorial time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, what measures can you take to protect your systems? Remembering, though, one important fact. You can prevent someone getting in, but you can't stop them trying. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, it is Q&A and advice time, KISS tutorial time, viewer video request time, all wrapped up into one neat little bundle again, here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Sunday morning. As I said at the beginning, during last night's Backyard Tech Channel weekend livestream conversation, Saturday edition, Tenex Optics posed a question to me that took me and the people that joined us for last night's convo a little bit of time to try and figure out what he was asking. As per usual, Tanix doesn't exactly give me a lot of detail, so I'm basing this on the lack of detail again that he's provided me. Long story short, how do you stop someone getting into your systems? You can stop them getting in, but you can't stop them trying. Basically, a hacker will find an IP address and attempt to get in. He might have one shot of it, give up, or he might write a, a script to try and continuously get in. So how do you protect your systems? In the case of Tenex Optics, he has what we are led to believe multiple different systems running all at once. Um, now, the, the, the easiest way of preventing your systems getting hit is a multi-layered defense. First off, put something between you and the outside world. Now, if that something is a modem, which doesn't exactly have a, a brilliant firewall, put something between your server and your modem. For example, if all your workstations and other servers connect to, say, a DHCP server running Windows or running Linux or running Unix, you know, something like that, put something between that front-end server and your modem. Now, if you're only running a red and green network, PFSense, Komodo, Indian, Sophos, Smoothwall, any of them, job done. If you connect through an NTU of some description, put the firewall in exactly the same spot between the front end server and the NTU. You have to put something there. So how do you, what are some of the ports that you need to shut in a firewall? We've gone over this many times, but Tanix doesn't go back through the playlist to have a sticky beak at what we've done. Some of the most common ports you would want to shut is port 21, 22, and 53. Port 53 will prevent a DNS attack. A lot of people assume you need port 53 open coming in. No, you don't. You don't have to have port 53 open inbound. At the moment, my Zentiel firewall has port 0 to port 65,000 blocked in. Everything can go out blocked coming in okay that's your first point put a firewall between you and the outside world or between you and the modem between you and the NTU or whatever put it between your DHCP server whatever that is and the outside world that will protect you there 
Now, most modems don't exactly have a really rock solid firewall. So you need a, 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 you need to make one. Or if you can afford one, a WatchGuard box, Ubiquity box, um, a PF box, you know, something like that. Buy one, make one, whatever. Okay, there's your firewall. Now, what about all your endpoints, though? Your servers, your workstations, VMs, everything. Antivirus. I run Komodo. I am about to have a bit of a sticky beak at Bitdefender shortly. So you put antivirus across everything. Now, if you're running Linux, you can use Clam AV. You can use um, Komodo. Um, something like that. You can use that. Okay? Put antivirus on everything. Run your firewall security level high prevent known block prevent ports that are known to be used for hacking you know 21 22 53 443 um, reverse dns lookups all that type of stuff now tenix gets himself muddled up here regularly so tenix listen and listen carefully replay this multiple times until you understand you can't you can stop someone getting in but you can't stop them trying hackers continuously hit the same companies all the time trying to figure out a way of getting in you can't stop a hacker trying to get in but you can prevent them getting in Okay, I say it again. You can stop a hacker getting into your system. You can't stop them trying. All right. Tanix gets himself muddled up with this because either he doesn't go back through the playlist and have a look at all the firewalls and antiviruses that we've talked about in the cybersecurity videos we've done, or he forgets about them. A multi-layered defense scenario is running um, hardened up firewall or managed gateway server and then reputable, strong, well-maintained, well-developed antivirus, anti-spam, whatever. Now, whether it's Bitdefender, whether it's Komodo, whether it's Avast, whatever although window microsoft and avast are arguing at the moment so any of that okay now bitdefender does have a free version of their paid version available old mate's going to be taking a look at that later this week too um so 10x the, the, like we said in last night's conversation a hacker will try because it hit your public IP or it'll hit your A record or it'll hit your DNS record or whatever. Okay? But you can't stop a hacker trying. You can stop a hacker getting in. But he, if he wants to see what's on that public IP address, he will try and find out what's on that public IP address. Regardless of whether it's IPv4 or V6 or it's MAC address. Alright? So, here's what... Tenix needs to do. Number one is put something between his DHCP server and his modem. That's the first thing. The second thing he's got to do is get a reputable antivirus, anti-spam, anti-malware package onto everything. VMs, server, workstations, everything. Tablets, mobile phones, the whole lot. That will prevent webmail attacks, especially if you are, you know, with Yahoo, for want of a better term, um, or you open up an attachment that's a bit dodgy from a webmail interface, and, you know, something's in there that shouldn't be in there. Tenix wants to stop a hacker getting in. But he gets himself muddled up 
You can stop a hacker getting in, you can't stop them trying, okay? So the best thing to do, one of the best things you can do actually, strangely enough, is firewall, antivirus, anti-mail, anti-spam. Now, I use Komodo, but I'm about to have a bit of a sticky beak, a bit defender this week too, so my, that may change. I may run Bitdefender and Komodo all in one hit. Oh no, hang on, I don't think I can do that. We'll see. So, 10x, put something between your DHCP server, which I think he's running Windows, and the modem, like a gateway. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that, 10x, because that would require me ripping my system to pieces again. And I don't want to have to rebuild it. The other thing though is every system's different. Every requirement is different. So 10X, listen, put a firewall between the server and the modem and then put antivirus, anti-mail, anti-spam across everything. That will stop a hacker getting in. It won't stop a hacker trying. See, Tanix wants to stop a hacker trying to get in. They will try. But if you run a multi-layered defense platform, they won't. And assuming you configure it correctly, they may end up giving up. Now, if you happen to get an email come in that's a little bit, you know, if you run a good quality antivirus, anti-mail, anti-spamware platform on your workstation or your endpoint or something, that program, as that file comes down or is seen will prevent it. In case of Komodo, it dropped the connection on me. Or it stopped the download and said, yeah, no, you're not downloading this. It's got something nasty in the back end of it. And that was from my Gmail account. So 10X, if you put a firewall between your DHCP server and your modem, and then you run a good, reputable antivirus, anti-mail, anti-spam across everything. You will prevent a hacker getting in, but you can't stop them trying. Now, in some cases, they might stop a try after one minute. Or they might, you know, continuously try. As long as you've got a multi-layered defense, they can't get in. As long as you've got the security level set high. Like, right up there. That's the best way I can explain it. It's probably the only way I can explain it. So hopefully that helps 10x optics out. Again though, he didn't give me a lot of information, so I'm working with what I got my hands on. There we are. Don't forget tonight, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, GMT, UTC, plus 11. We'll have the Sunday night edition of the Backyard Tech Channel Live Stream Conversations also coming up today. Got a real-time drive video coming up for you as well at some stage. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.